Hello! This video about primitive art. Primitive society is the most ancient period of human history and culture. It all started with the first primates who not only used the stone and other materials for their needs, but also saved it for another similar case. It's happened about 3 million years ago. Modern science know animals that do the same. These are crows that take out insect with a stick and monkeys that crack nuts with a stone. Sea otters that carry a stone with them for this or some octopuses that carry shells for protection. People also know how to use different improvised tools many times. Conditionally, we can say that the passion for accumulating functional things is one of the factors that made a primate a person. The primitive period is divided into the Stone Age, the Cope Age, the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. However, all these terms are rather arbitrary. In the Stone Age not only stone is used. The Copper Age is classified as transitional and in some classification is included in the next the Bronze Age. At that time, an alloy of copper and tin was created bronze. The Bronze Age lasted until 1000 BC, but in America the Iron Age came only at the end of the 15th century, and in Australia and Oceania until the 17th. The Stone Age is divided into Ancient Paleolithic, Middle Mesolithic and Late Neolithic. Neolithic begins with the Neolithic Revolution, the transition from hunting and gathering to agriculture and cattle breeding. It's happened about 10,000 years ago in the Middle East, in the area of the Fertile Crescent. And this is a difficult question of primitive culture, because until today there is no single theory explaining why people changed their way of life. The late Neolithic period includes the oldest examples of art. Modern findings in Morocco, South Africa, Israel and other countries may call this fact into question, but so far these are only hypotheses. Primitive art was discovered in the 19th century. One of the most ancient types of art is sculpture. Figurines of the so-called Paleolithic Venus play a special role. In 1864, the first of them, Venus Impudic, was discovered in France. But the oldest of them, we can say Grandmother, a Venus from Holland Fels found in Germany. This is the period 35 to 40,000 years ago. Do not be confused by the beauty of ladies. Researchers are still disputing about the purpose of the figures, but the main versions say that they symbolize fertility. So most have white hips, large belly and bust, clearly made velva, but small or absent head and hands. The most famous of the Paleolithic Venus is Venus von Willensdorf, found in Austria. 
Note, she has a head, but no face. But I have a theory. Maybe it's just scarring. A type of scarring tattoo, like in this picture. We can assume that Venus von Willensdorf is bald and covered with scars all over her head. Her eyes are closed and the mouth is a small hole. Similar figures were found in Italy, in Czech Republic, in Russia, including the rice packing in the Moscow region, and in other countries. At the end of the 19th century, amateur archaeologist De Sautola and his daughter found the Altamira cave in Spain. Eleven years earlier, a local hunter discovered the entrance to the cave while freeing his dog. He is not interested in the drawing. But an archaeologist and his friend excavated a cave and dated the drawing to the Paleolithic. Now the drawing date back to the late Paleolithic. Later, many similar caves were found around the world. The most valuable and famous of them, Lascaux in France because it has almost 2,000 surviving drawings, which date back to the period of 15th to 18th thousand years ago. This cave found accidentally, for boys in 1940. The pine was struck by lightning. It fell. A hole was formed. Further history was made by useful curiosity and after it a long walk of archaeologists. Most excite the imagination of researchers and ordinary people, object of primitive architecture. These are megalithic constructions from huge stones which appear in 3rd to 2nd thousand BC all over the world. The purpose is still a matter of controversy. Menhis are vertical stones. Their height is more than 2 meters. One version suggests that such blocks are analogous to modern steels installed as funerary or commemorative signs. It date back to the Neolithic, Coupe and Bronze Age. Dolmens are relatively small structures made of large stones. They may be funerary structures. Dolmens are found all over the world. On the territory of Russia, there are many in Adige and Krasnodar Krai, belonging to 3rd to 2nd thousand BC. But there are also older ones, for example, Krukoberte in Spain, date back to 4th thousand BC. Cromlex are circular fences of vertically standing menhirs. There are many versions of use. Calenda, open air temple, model of solar system, etc. The most famous Cromlech is located in England. This is Stonehenge. It was created in three phases in 4th to 3rd thousand BC. It consists of 82 5 ton megaliths. Three stone blocks of 25 tons, five huge trilitons, structures of three stones weighing up to 50 tons, and the so called altar in the center weighing six tons. Cromlechs are found throughout Eurasia, 
but most of them in the British Isles and the Peninsula of Brittany, France. It is difficult to reconstruct all spheres of life of people of the primitive period because of the great distance from us in time. To compensate for this moment, scientists observe representatives of traditional culture. It is a term for the cultures of people who continue to live in our time at the primitive level. By analogy with similar culture, it can be assumed that the primitive had such arts as music, songs, dances, etc. Probably the reason for the emergence of art were religious and mythological representations, which throughout the history of mankind played a very important role. In the next lecture, I will tell you about the traditional forms of beliefs. Subscribe to my channel. Please like the video if you liked it. If you find a mistake in my English, please write to me in the comments. Thank you for your attention.